Hello, this is Stephen Marcos of Anno 1838. Today we want to give you a quick summarization of the comprehensive concept of the line as described by F.C. Christman. This is part of our interpretation of the theoretisch praktische Anleitung des Hauenstoßfechtens. Let's start. You might be familiar or might have seen fencing instructors explaining the concept of the line by placing two students' feet on a line on the ground, typically a line on the floor of the gym. This explanation is meant to help align the body and visualize a line of attack. That's a good and quick way of calibration, especially for the beginner. But it will become hard to work with the moment a fight gets more lively and fencers leave the artificial grid of lines on the floor. Due to Christman's didactics, we need to explain some essentials first before we can show his idea of the line. That's because Christman's concept is to explain things only once, train them and rely on the skill afterwards without mentioning it ever again. Strict guy, but definitely has its charm. Thus said, we need to have a look at paragraphs 14 to 16. The Stellung, meaning stance or guard, is Christman's favorite reference point of body structure. Let's have a look at it. To build up a proper stance, we start from the bottom with the feet, which are to be placed in a 90 degree angle to one another, in such a way that the strong foot can pass behind the weak one. Uh, you should keep a one foot wide stance, and of course with a strong foot pointing towards your target. The weight should be distributed about 50-50 between both legs. Next up are the knees, which should be slightly bent with the strong knee pointing again towards your target and the weak knee in a 90 degree angle against it. Next up are the hips, where the free hand as a fist is pressed against your hip and uh, the hips are kept in a neutral position while also turned as far open as possible. At this point, uh, it is important to check the weight distribution and the knees if everything is still in position. Next up, the body itself, which is to be kept upright. Next point of order are the shoulders, which should be relaxed, but also um, in the direction of your target aligned. Again, check your knees, check your weight distribution. Next up, the blade. The arm should be kept straight and the wrist should be above eye level. The saber should be held in a hammer grip with the pommel resting against the heel of your hand. Finally, the blade should be in a 60 degree angle to the vertical and of course pointing against your target. The last point is the head, which of course you should look towards your target and the head should be kept upright. You should adopt the stance before and after every defense or attack. You should keep it in your upper body when moving or lunging. You should keep the guard when you have to recover. It's because Christman assumes it to be the best position ready for attack while in itself the fencer is under good cover already. Now, please make sure that you have mastered all the points on how to take, keep and regain the basic stance correctly anytime and under any circumstance. Just as explained in the last scene, remember Christman would only explain the following to you once you have trained and adopted the fundamentals of the stance. Now it's time to enrich the concept of the line with Christman's point of view. Our interpretation attaches importance to the following sentence as found in paragraph 20. The fencing line or line marks the straight direction of the arm with the weapon such that this one is always pointing against the right chest of the opponent, a posture which we outlined in paragraph 15 in the description of the stance. Let's see what that means in detail. 
First of all, the line on the ground now becomes a line in space. Secondly, since the position of the arm is connected to the look under the hilt, um, but simultaneously guarding the forehead and the upper body, it makes sense to lower or raise your arm when facing a shorter or taller opponent, thus shifting this line in space. Thirdly, the shifting of the line applies to any movement on the floor as well. If you step to your left or right, traverse or circle, you will move your complete structure, thus your arm, and with it the line as Christman describes it. Last but not least, and as a conclusion, the line is linked to body posture. When a proper posture is assumed, the arm pointing into the direction of the target automatically becomes the line. And that's a good aid for learning about the line and a quick orientation in fights to get back on the line. Proper guard, good aim, and you hold or reclaim your line easily. That's it. Christman's concept of the line. Points to memorize are basically to take a real good position, guard or stance, aim at your opponent and your arm will be your line. No markings on the floor are needed to explain and in addition it is three-dimensional rather than two-dimensional. Thank you very much for watching. Have your own try after our video and have a good time at Dryen Online. Goodbye.